S C P Secure, Contain, Protect. SCP is the umbrella term for a community writing project stemming from a 4chan post in a paranormal forum in 2007. The original post was made by an anonymous user who was later identified as Wesley Moto42 Williams. Today, SCP has its own website with over 7,500 catalogued objects and thousands more short stories. All of these pieces of writing circulate the SCP Foundation, a sort of shadow government organization that specializes in finding and containing anomalous objects and entities. Their mottos best display this, the main one being the acronym Secure, Contain, Protect. The main one being the acronym Special Containment Procedures, and less known but equally understandable being We Die in the Dark, So You May Live in the Light. Now, of course this universe spans more than just the SCP Foundation, with many other groups like the Serpent's Hand and the Chaos Insurgency. As a community writing project, it's hard to explain the true expanse of the SCP wiki, and that is why I'm starting this series. That's right, I'm going to be taking you on a journey through the SCP universe, mainly focusing on the expansive lists of item and entities with an occasional deep dive into a character or a tale. It's truly incredible the quality and quantity of works that are on this site, so let's give them the spotlight. Continuing from where we left off with the SCP groups of interest, the Chicago Spirit was an incredibly large anomalous criminal organization in the Western Hemisphere, specifically in the United States of America. The Spirit was known for recruiting individuals with anomalous capabilities and creating and exploiting anomalous artifacts for use in criminal activities. Founded in 1895 by a man named Richard D. Chappell, who was himself an anomalous individual. After years of failed efforts, the Foundation eventually came to a truce with the Spirit in January of 1919, in order to prevent the spread of SCP-2680. Now unimpeded, the Spirit grew rapidly. However, due to their growth, in the 1920s, the Foundation had to terminate their truce in order to prevent the complete dissolution of scientific normalcy. In 1933, Richard Chappell was finally apprehended, and the Spirit organization slowly destabilized, with its members and assets leaking off into other organizations. By 1938, the Foundation officially declared the Chicago Spirit defunct. However, there are rumors of the Spirit's continued survival, with various artifacts being discovered which imply the group's involvement. The Children of the Scarlet King is a religious order worshipping an entity known as the Scarlet King. The majority of the members of this church share a key set of beliefs, while the nature of the organizations, and sometimes even their doctrine, can vary between manifestations. Discerning between the Children of the Scarlet King and other mundane groups of interests has sometimes proven difficult for the Foundation, and the true nature of the Scarlet King, if it exists at all, is unknown. The Church of the Broken God is another religious order who emerged after the discovery and containment of SCP-882, claiming that it was the Heart of God. Led by Robert Bumaro, the Church of the Broken God is a group of zealots, believing that many SCP items are actually part of a god which was broken after the creation of the universe. By restoring it to its whole state, they believe that they themselves will gain godhood. In the time since the group first made contact, three other key components have been tentatively identified, being SCP-217, SCP-271, and SCP-1139. The Church is incredibly hostile towards the Foundation, and brands them as heretics. They will attempt to kill operatives and break containment of SCP items. It's unknown how they are able to detect these items, but they can do so with a frightening accuracy. In addition, they have shown a remarkable ability to resist the mental effects of SCP items. The Church is viewed as a threat to both the SCP Foundation and mankind themselves, 
so members are to be detained by force, eliminated, or whatever is deemed necessary by anyone at the time. The Church of the Second Hytoth is an occult organization of human and alien entity. These entities all adhere to the same Arothan religion, aiming to aid a universal guardian deity, known as Rachmal Lusan, in combat against extra-universal threats. The central belief of this religion is that the current universe was preceded by another one, which used to exist until it was consumed by an extra-universal entity. A group of survivors fled to the newly created second reality, our reality, with seven of them choosing to ascend to godhood to ensure the universe's safety. Now, six of these gods have died over time, leaving Rachmal Lusan as the last survivor. This church tends to keep to itself underneath a rather heavy veil, likely to avoid scrutiny from other organizations. The main language dates back forever, and is unanimously, and seems to be anomalously kept unchanged despite the distances between sects. Beyond the church, this religion has interstellar and intergalactic presence, having initially emerged among extraterrestrial civilizations. The only civilization known to have entered the solar system is Species of Interest 002, and is presumed extinct. The Commission on Unusual Cargo was one of a number of precursors to the Foundation, established by the East India Company in 1623 for the purpose of containing and protecting more peculiar cargo. This continued until 1649, in which the group disappeared with all of its assets, in response to a demand from the East India Company that they utilize the unusual cargo in military means. Subsequently, the group operated in secret, and continued to collect objects until its merger with the Foundation in 1917. A number of these items were transferred to the Foundation's possession, along with cargo manifests describing the properties and procedures of safe storage for this cargo. The vast record of anomalous history is still being reviewed and digitized by archive. While it was active, the commission was headed by a merchant officer, the Right Honourable, or Thaniel Trower. It's unclear if this was a single, anomalously long-lived individual, or a series of people using the same name. However, as a commissioner, he was overseen and advised by an eight-member board, and commanded a large staff. Deer College is a co-educational liberal arts and occult sciences college, which is in the heart of three Portlands an extra-dimensional city-state located adjacent to the American Northwest. Their curriculum focuses on the marriage of mundane and occult disciplines. A number of prominent figures in the anomalous world are dear alumni, including Vincent Anderson, the CEO of Anderson Robotics, and Esther Kogan, one of the co-founders of Gamers Against Weed. As the Foundation's operations in Three Portlands are heavily restricted, Deer College itself is relatively free from Foundation intervention. However, all alumni are automatically marked as persons of interest, and may be subject to increased Foundation scrutiny. Doctor One Detainment is an interesting organisation in the fact that it's unclear if it's an individual or a collective entity. However, what we do know is that they are capable of producing anomalous artefacts which thematically resemble children's toys. The nature of these objects varies, although they were clearly intended to be used by children. Dr. Wondertainment is known to have targeted Foundation personnel in the past, and their feelings towards the Foundation appear ambiguous. There are speculated links to the factory, however, they are, as of current, unconfirmed. The Factory is one of the most interesting groups of interest, despite being one that the least is known about. In fact, very little is known about the Factory. Excursions into facilities supposed to be operated by them have yielded very limited results, and there have been no concrete conclusions that have been reached, except that they seem capable of manufacturing anomalous artifacts. 
this becomes a large issue because the factory appears capable of mass production of SCP items, which causes major issues for the Foundation. There are a fair number of SCP items which can be attributed to have been created by the factory. The groups of interest in the SCP world really help to sort of bolster it up. Um, it really makes it feel more lived in, the fact that there are oppositions, and there are so many. While some of these aren't obviously direct oppositions, the ones I have spoken about today are. And whilst we get further, you'll see that this tends to be the case for a lot. I, I, I do love that the SCP Foundation, the Foundation themselves, are not morally good. So you can actually find yourselves somewhat associating with some of these other organizations. And when I say that the Foundation isn't morally good, it's very much the, um, the few for the many kind of thing. They are working towards good ends, usually, but their methods are definitely not ethical. In the next video, we will continue to look at more groups of interest, but for today, Thank you for watching.